Guys, before we get into this episode, I have a very small ask for you, a very small favor, and it's around your support. We want to host the big conversations with very influential people, and we can't do it without you guys. So we'd love a like and subscribe on YouTube. We'd love your support on Instagram. Anything that you can provide for us in viewership and support is going to help us get on the map so that we can actually host these sort of conversations and just provide better content for you guys, which we are really striving to do. So please like and subscribe, get around us, and we're going to strive to host bigger and better production and conversations. Mm, uh, you talked about playing with uh, Cristiano <laughs> and uh, Lionel Messi. So what do you remember about playing with some of the greatest, even there's so many other amazing players that are world class some of the best that have ever played uh, that you you played against in the La Liga um what do you remember from playing against these players players at this level what does it really teach you uh, what did you kind of see in them that makes them just the best that we've ever seen uh, like Materazzi say I think it's Materazzi no like Materazzi say I I start to believe more in God because I need to, to pray for, try to stop that pleasure. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, I think it, I, I think it's Materazzi say that, something like that. Uh, but no, it's... Very good, ready to go. Okay. And we are live. Welcome to another episode of Going Pro. I have a special guest with us today, first time uh, having a professional footballer on. When I say football, I'm talking about soccer, but I'm going to be using football. I don't want to be talking about soccer with a Spanish man who has grown up with it being called football, so I don't want to say any rubbish like soccer around you. I don't want to offend you, my, my man. So we have Javi Lopez. He is a Spanish professional footballer who plays fullback uh, or central midfielder for Adelaide United currently, but uh, you've had a vast majority of your professional career playing in the La Liga with Espanol, 10 years approximately. Yeah. And uh, you've played against the greats. You've played against the goats, Ronaldo, uh, Messi, and just all of the absolute weapons that have been through some of those teams in Spain. And you appeared to play 283 competitive matches in that time, which is an amazing achievement. So... Thank you, first of all, for being here with us today. Thank you to you uh, for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's true, uh, all the afternoon go. I am thinking uh, about, oh, I need to go to the postcard <laughs> in another language. Yeah. Uh, probably I am struggling, but we are here. We are yeah. here. <laughs> We're going to give it a go. So uh, first time having someone on the podcast that English is your second language and um, you've only been in Australia for a few years. So we're going to do our best to... I'm going to do my best to talk a little bit slower to make sure that we actually uh, can, yeah, can help you just express yourself in a way um, that feels natural in your second language, which is, um, yeah, I can't imagine me trying to speak on a podcast in Italian. It'd be, <laughs> that'd be an absolute nightmare. Um, Javi, I just want to talk a little bit more about um, your, your upbringing in Spain, so how you grew up. Uh, what was it like? Where are you from in Spain? And how was, how was your childhood growing up there? Uh, I born in a little village in the south of Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of my village is Osuna. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a little village uh, 80 kilometers from Seville in the south. Yeah, I grew up there for until I have 21 years. I moved to, to Barcelona. Um, my childhood there was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Uh, I enjoyed a lot of with the with my friends, with the family, uh, playing soccer, playing uh, it's football, no. football. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> is the fair you say? I have <laughs> the mistake. Uh, no, I play um, their football and other sports. Um, all my my memories there uh, was unbelievable. 
Yeah. Would you say it was really family orientated and you were just always outside making up games and playing a lot, always having football around and always just kicking the ball and, and that ticket tacker and <laughs> passing, shooting? Was this always how it was after school? Is this a lot of your, how your childhood was? Yeah, that's my, totally my, my childhood because um, I don't know if you know here one, one cartoon. Uh, the name is uh, Campeones, is a, a soccer player. Oliver Benji is the name mm -hmm. of the main character. Mm -hmm. um, we are all the time watching that, that cartoon in the morning. Um, Oliver, Oliver Atom is always with the ball. And he always told about the, the ball is your friend. And I went all the time. No, I... I went all the time with my ball. Sometimes yeah. in my backpack, I I take off the the notes, the book for go to the school. Yeah, I put the ball without my man know. Um, when my man know the books is there in my in my room, yes. uh, what happened? Where are you where are you doing? I I went with my with my ball in my backpack <laughs> all the time, trying to do with the do some skill, different skill all the time, 24 hours with the ball. Wow. Would you say that's really common for Spanish boys in particular? Like always just being around like football or thinking about just like sport in general? More before, more before because now the the, the society changed, totally changed yes. because now it's, we are in another another moment. On with the, technologies. Yeah, yeah, with technologies. But it's true in that moment, if uh, all the we don't need another thing to do we don't have laptop we don't have connection to to youtube to mm -hmm. to watch the the tv when you watch to watch the sun sun tv show you need to stay there that time if you lost uh, the day of the tv show or the hour of the tv show you cannot watch more because you mm -hmm. cannot find the the way for watch again the mm -hmm. the tv show uh, mm -hmm. for that I think I am. Um, I would like my my children grow up in the same time that oh, yes. for for one year or for month. I, I would like they they can live that moment. I like I did it. Mm. Yeah, it's very true because I think about my childhood and as I was growing up, we had technology starting to come in. Um, but I feel like in my childhood, we were always just playing outside. I was always hitting a tennis ball, always playing football, uh, always just throwing a ball, always just making up games with friends. Um, and then we had technology come in as well. So I feel like we had a kind of a nice balance between, but it must be very hard for the kids now to actually have that way of life with so much uh, technology in their lives. And now is, I think is the, the parents have a big, big role now in in the in her, their life because if you give the the telephone to the children is the easy way mm. that is the easy way okay i go to the restaurant with my with friend and my wife okay the children please don't bother me <laughs> take the yes. take the phone no no I, you need to hear your your children they need to do different different things they need to Cry, scream, run, go mm. outside the restaurant, play with the another friends. Mm. I think it, for me that is so important uh, yeah. in this moment. I completely agree, and I think a lot of parents are finding it difficult to navigate this with technology now and put kind of boundaries to say no, this is too much now, and you have to stop. But I think a lot of people that have had a European background or live in Europe or have come from Europe have a better connection with understanding that process and i think yeah, in australia we're struggling with that um i want to talk a lot more about all of that and being a father and what it's like being a father um to your children um but before we go there i want to, i want to tie it back into talking about your process to become a professional football player in spain so what age did you feel like you were starting to get quite good um, how much were you training? How was the training and how was the process to start moving in a direction where you thought that maybe becoming a professional might become an option for you? Different moments around the four or five years is different moment. I can, I can feel, I can, I can 
feel I, I can feel I uh, can I do a good player? Yes, yes. Or could be a good player. Uh, one of them is you start in the school with with your your friends uh, playing uh, football in, in the school. Um, f I remember is one of my friends is one of my t my my classmate is so good. In the first I won't beat him. Before that I am so competitive all my life. I want to beat him. Uh, for that, uh, after the school, when I arrived to my house, I w I remember I went to to the balcony in the wall with the ball all the time. One, mm. two, three, four, five, until my mom called me. Hey, it's time to a snack or it's mm -hmm. time to dinner. Uh, that is the first step. From from that step, I start to play. After that, is one two year I improve for myself. I am not enrolling in any academy and uh, in the in the in the in, in, in any club yes um after that i enrolling in one football fight club for one year i start to play there i start to to grow up to increase my my level after that year i moved to to football seven uh, when you are under 12 you can play football seven uh, i start the same process and then football fight. I start one year there, two year. In some moment of my life, I found an important person, mm. one of mass, one of the most important person in, in my career is yeah. Juanito Carmona. Yes, is the is probably is my third coach in my life, but he, he's a, a older ex-professional player. Yeah. He played in Seville. He played in Real Murcia. Um, he look at me, he think, he always, eh, from, I, I was uh, 12 or 11 years, and he say, he went to my dad, and he said, is we training with this boy? 100% he can, uh, he can become to a right to be a pro. A pro. Um, he really believed in you. He really spoke to your family about yeah, yeah. Your, your potential. Yeah, he, he started to, but he say, but that is a long way, yeah, a course. difficult way. Um, probably he need to do a lot of sacrifice, a lot of effort. And we did, we did it, we did it with the support of my my parents. It's so important too. Is the the second the second part of the, in that moment. I need the support of my parents, mm. and they support me. They support the the coach for training with him. He, I remember we're 11, 12 years. Probably I am going to training five days a week plus the game. Uh, like a professional when the when the people ask me hey, when when you made your when you did your your debut in professional play i say i did my debut w later because i did my debut with 23 year old mm -hmm. but it's true i i consider to me uh, to myself professional player from 11 or 12 years wow. because from that moment i start to to training like a professional like a rest like a professional with 11 year or 12 year what children as salad to the parents? Okay, no salad because that is the most important or the best food for me for a right to for become a be a, a pro. Uh, from that moment, I remember when, when with twelve year, thirteen year, fourteen year, with you start to go aside with friends, the the first parties. I don't. I have a good moments, but. My, I am focused, totally focused in becoming a profession. Mm, that's that is, incredible. That is, uh, I need to be so, I am so grateful with, with Juanito Carmona, with the support of my parents. And after I have uh, my, my wife is now, but she's my girlfriend, my first girlfriend. And that's we are, beautiful. The, we are all the, all the life together and the support of her is, is unbelievable too. <laughs> of without, course. Without her. I think I cannot. I cannot stay here now. Yeah, this that that three. My parents, my my fair coach, and my wife is the the three people. The three people uh, or the three person uh, help me for stay here with you now. <laughs> That's incredible. I, there's so many things I want to grab onto and talk about. Just from what you said, is <laughs> so many beautiful things. Um, first of all, what I loved hearing was training like a like acting like a professional from the age of 12 years old when i work with children and uh, boys and girls from the age of 10 11 12 13 14 one thing that i really 
I rarely see from them is they don't treat it like they are a professional already. They don't look at it like it's I'm going to be a professional and the the being a professional starts now, not when I become there. It's like you need to be a professional before you actually become a professional and then believe that inside yeah. of yourself and train like that. And I think um, that's a big reason why a lot of people struggle to get to these levels because they don't understand the sacrifice and they don't believe inside themselves that they are actually already a professional. Um, they just they haven't made it or gone to that level where they're recognized as a professional. Um, so I really enjoy that and I think that's such an important thing for anyone that wants to go professional in any field or any sport or even something in their career or business. I think it's something to really think about. Today's podcast sponsor is Electric Road Agency, who were formerly 4RT. Now, if you want a team of strategists, designers, producers, creators who drive stories to tell your advertising and marketing needs, these guys are the best in the business. They've been extremely influential for us at ATA. They've driven our media game forward to new levels that we never knew that were possible. And they've done it with countless brands, big, small. It doesn't matter what the size. They just love telling your story. So they specialize in health, wellness, fitness, tourism, construction. And they are just the best in the business in creating adaptive solutions to find how to tell your brand or how to discover your brand and tell that story. So highly, highly, highly recommend these guys. And if you want to get in touch, please go on Electric Road dot au or search the instagram handle electric road agency and they will answer your email your call your dm and they'll be in touch and they'll be able to tell your story very well to really think about um and uh, juanito is that his name juanito juanito, juanito. Yeah. um what did he really help you with so you talked about him just really believing in you, but how did how did he be? How was he the most important person to you? What sort of things did he really help you with? <laughs> Look at <the> <laughs> Because I, it's like like yesterday, I remember it. It was like yesterday. Before yeah. We training uh, under the rainy. We training under the sun in summer, winter. Uh, when it's parties, uh, all the people, or it's even the um, the facilities is closed, we get one kiss for training with him. I remember a lot of days training him and me alone in the pitch, all, only us. Um, he lost moment with his family for a stay with me um, for no reason to help me. Wow. No reason, no, nothing, nothing, nothing more than, than help me because he believed in me. Uh, I remember when I, I made my de debut in first division, I remember one, one, one message from him in mm. WhatsApp. I see one WhatsApp and he say, I know that from 11 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He no believed way. in you that much. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That's incredible. You don't find that often. Not many people will believe in you that much and give everything to really actually helping you get or get to your dreams like that. Yeah, no. Was he was like another dad to you. He's like another father. In that moment, yes. Mm -hmm. In that moment, even in that moment, because you are so focused in, in, in football, probably in that moment is even more important than my dad. My dad have a role like that. Mm -hmm. He need to teach me about the high board, about mm -hmm. education. But the most important in my life in that moment is football. Mm -hmm. Who know about football? My coach. Mm -hmm. I for me is a it's, you say it's another dad. But sometimes I want to learn football. He know football. Or it's even sometimes even more than my dad. My, don't, more than my dad. Mm. What what sort of things did he teach you about? like mentality or just how to use your mind or yeah more 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 in this way more him yeah, the, yeah, yeah juanito. The, uh, juanito more than the mentality yes he 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 worked in that way but not too much 20 we are talking about uh 20 20 20 20 
six years ago. Yeah. 26 years ago is true. We don't talk about mentality. You know? sure. Now it's a, a common a common them yes. for, for talk about the mentality and the mind and the mindset and yes. how you control, how you manage your mental health is so yeah. important. But in that moment, no. In that moment, uh, but I remember one thing he did it with me. Uh, one punishment he he did. Uh, I did. Uh, I went to to the goal. I tried to do a chip to the keeper. Uh, I miss, and he say, "Hey, when you are a professional, you can do that. But you need to learn here. You need to learn and do the the correct uh, stuff. Uh, for that, you need to start to run. I start to run, run, run. Every lap, I look at him, and he know. I look at him. He turn the the head." And um, I was run re, uh, run that day, ran that day, uh, forty five minutes. Forty five minutes continuous I, for for, uh, for a chip. Yeah, for yeah. a chip. Wow, yeah, that is crazy. That is one of the punishment he did. It. I think it's the only one. Yeah, I always try to learned. follow. Try to follow the rules. Mm. I always try to follow what he did and what he said to me. Mm. Um, I think that that punishment helped me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure, sure. you would have learned a lesson. Do, do you think that's really important? Do you think that's really important for a coach to really be firm in that way to make sure that you you you're yeah doing the right thing and learning these important lessons? I think so. I think so. In more when you are you are in the way for be a become a professional mm. because if you are for having fun, it's okay. We are here for having fun. We can have fun. Mm -hmm. But you want to be a professional because after he, he, in the game, when uh, when you are right to become a professional, or you are in that way, uh, no one gives to you nothing. Yeah. No one. You need to win everything for yourself mm -hmm. uh, with the help of your staff or your team. But no one do in in the professional in the professional sports or in all the all, all the um, in business in whatever place like professional it's so competitive we are in a competitive world no one gives to you nothing i think mm. it's so important you need to be uh, eh, here if you cannot go out here if no if you get one day one finger the second day is two the third day is four mm. and after is the arm and after probably that that person with good uh, skills mm. probably don't have right to be a, become a, a pro because if he's not he not he or she don't have the mentality. Yeah, I completely agree. This is so important. What you're saying, I think, is so important for people that are aspiring to become a professional. Um, it's yeah, really great advice and things to think about. Um, so how long were you working with uh, Juanito? So from what age and what age did you potentially stop working with him? Uh, from 10 until 14. Yeah. yeah. But in that moment with him, because he believed in me a lot, mm -hmm. of, I start to do training with the coach of athletic in Osuna too. Uh, um, athletic Madrid? Athletic, no, athletic, 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 okay. athletic. Okay. We yeah. have there a... Uh, a uh, good runner, sure, 800 sure. meters runner. Oh, is I say yes, yes. Uh, it's uh, Antonio Reina. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, Olympic. Uh, he went to two or three Olympic games, mm. uh, representing Spain. And um, he's training there. He's a good coach. Um, Juanito told with him, eh, "I believe in this boy. I want him training. He I want him here to be a stronger, mm. um, fit." Uh, before I train in football or after training football, I need to train in athletic too. From mm -hmm. 11 years, three years until 14. And uh, with 14 years, I moved to Seville because I signed a, I signed contract with the youth, the Academy of Real Betis. It's Real Betis. Real Betis. Yes, in the Academy yes. Real Betis for seven years. From 14 to 21, yeah. approximately. Yeah. And and how was that? How was that training when you started? And you did all that work with Juanito to then move to a professional youth. Um, team to then play from there. How was that? Uh, uh, in Osuna, in my village, with Juanito, the we have one. We have there one level. Uh, when you move to one professional team, uh, the level is more similar, more quality. The level, 
Uh, quality, no. It's more yeah, every, yeah, every, yeah. Everyone is high quality. Yeah, in, everyone in, is in high quality. It's more, most difficult for, for me. But what happened? I training like a professional <laughs> before the front 10 uh, until 14 years. I train in football five days a week, five days a week plus the game. And I train in athletic, <laughs> like athletic too. I arrived right there. I yeah, I felt like a. You well, felt ready. Ready, um, yeah. better prepared um, than than other players. There. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, even the my first season there, I was uh, 14 year. I don't know how it's here, but there we have different years. You can play two years together, but when you are right to prof to professional team, you play with your age. You are from my case 1986. I need to stay with one thing. But I moved the the first season. I went with the year older than me. Yes, yes, I see. Because the the coach, they 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 thought uh, I can I can stay in one year more. Mm. Mm. Okay, so were you a standout player in that team? And then how did it go after that? That you feel like you were progressing really well? Did you have any big challenges that stopped you from? getting towards a professional player? Was there anything hard moments throughout that time? Yeah, yeah, hard moment because when I moved to Seville, I need to move to the um, one house we have for the player from from far to Seville because my my village is one hour, one hour from Seville. Yeah, I cannot go four days a week, uh, go and back. No, no, we don't have no, we don't have the the time. Um, oh. It's all the time in the in the car, yeah. in the car. What, so, did your family move? So you lived with another family. Oh. I I live with with el eleven players more. Eleven players in more. the team. Not the team, but different age. Okay, from I see. the, yeah, the yeah. club from fourteen year. We are the youngest yeah. one. Uh, me, Fernando, in that moment, we are the youngest, mm. and we start to live with boys with 18 years. Imagine that different, the 14, 18 years, it's totally different. Of what course. they are living in with 18, we are we, what we are living with 14. Mm. And that was difficult moment at the start because it's, I start a new life with, mm. without my family, without my, without my mom, without her food, <laughs> without my, food. without my bro, my siblings, because I have one brother, older brother, and one uh, little sister. Um, without them too, is but for I follow my dream. <laughs> it's amazing. Did you feel like? you wanted to come home at any point? Like, were you getting really sad or miss them so much and have these moments of like, ah, oh, this is too hard. I want to go home. One time. Yeah. One time. What yeah, was that time? Yeah, yeah, I remember the the conversation with my mom uh, because it's a moment uh, I am, uh, I was, it's, you know, uh, when you are there, uh, I start to go with the national team under 17, it's with 17 year or 18 year, under 18, no, under 17, sorry. Uh, I went there, I went to the national team, when I come back, the I, I, I know, I felt the, the boss, uh, the coach doesn't want to me, doesn't want to talk with me, doesn't want to go with the team. Um, I doesn't want you in the team or didn't want to talk to you, you yeah. felt this, I, distance. I, even I don't, I didn't play in that moment. I come in from the um, national team under 17. I was right there. Yeah, I am not playing. Uh, in that moment, I cannot understand. I, well, what happened here? I, that happened for a long time, for a mm. long time. I went again to the national team under 17 uh, for trainings and come back. If that happened, I, uh, I was a difficult moment in the school because in that moment I am not really focused in the school. It's, I know it's so important, the most important, because you need to have, a, for, in case you don't, you don't uh, become professional, become yeah. a professional yeah. you need to have another chance to yeah. do. A, it's so important, the study and the school. But in the school is a bad moment too. I call to my mom, I want to go, I want to back, I want to back, I want to back. Um, mm. My mom told me, but 
is this your dream? Always you say you want to be a professional, you want to you want stay in the TV, like the professional, you say that from you have uh, you is or you was 10 years. Uh, after I hear to my man, I moved to a, to my village uh, because it's two or three months for finish the season. Mm. I moved to my village. Um, my dad uh, did the effort for go for drop on me and pick up me mm. all the days, three or four days a week plus the game for two or three months. After I start to feel feel better, 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 finish the season, and then the la, then the season after, I start to again living in the house with another vibes. <laughs> mm, okay, so you needed that time with your family to yeah. reset, to yeah. then feel confident again to go yeah. back. Yeah. Wow, that would have been really challenging, but like really lovely that you had your family there to help you, yeah. and then your dad. What a sacrifice for him to drive that many times a week. But after work. So, and drive an hour after work to go pick you up and then take you home. Yeah, one hour for drop of me in Seville. Yes. And one hour, for, one hour we go back to our village after for, work. He for, two to three, for two to three months. Yeah, for two or three months. Five days away. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. Yeah. We have people complaining about driving 20 minutes to tennis. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. This is yeah. so funny. Oh my goodness. When you are, when you are that, you can understand, you can understand, can understood. I can, I can understood what my dad did for me, but I know it's, it's, it's a big, big sacrifice. For it's him huge. Because sometimes you say sometimes for drive 20 minutes for, oh, we need to go now to the swimming lesson. We need to go now to the tennis lesson. We need, sometimes you complain, but. When you look back, your parents did it for you. They did it for you and they knew it was the right thing to do because they knew it was your dream and it's what you always wanted. So they wanted to help you get yeah. towards your dream. Yeah. So I can understand why you feel they're the most important people in your life along with your your wife and uh, Juanito. Yeah, That's beautiful. Um, I want to talk about how that led into Espanol. So you're struggling for some game time, struggling with some confidence. But then how did it turn around for you to start to move in a direction where you got signed and started to play in the La Liga for Espanol? I moved to, to Espanol for the youth team. Uh, I was playing in Real Betis. I have offer for continuing Real Betis. But in, that in, moment, in the senior team? In no, Real Betis. In, in Real Betis, in the youth team, the second team, in yes. the youth team. Um, in that moment, with my agents, uh, Loren Del Pino, uh, Alvaro Torre, uh, Rodolfo Rife, they are talking, uh, they have good relation in Espanol with the director of the Academy of Espanol, and they are talking with them. Uh, they present to me an offer, no, no is a, I didn't uh, take the decision about money. Uh, I take the decision because they are a team, uh, always uh, give the opportunity to the young player, only for that. I I went yeah, I move I decided to move to 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 Barcelona. It's far far than Osuna. We cannot go in car and back now. <laughs> we, it, dad, dad can't help you with that yeah, one. No, that no. In that moment, no. Uh, um, I moved to there. I moved to there. I have lucky because in the same moment another teammates from Real Betis signed there too and we we did the we did the move uh, together and we shared the experience uh, together we lived together um, his name is Alvaro Bracci he's a good friend now uh, we share a good moment uh, we share an important moment in our life mm, that's amazing yeah. that's beautiful so then um, you, you how did it lead to getting your first senior uh, game for Espanol? At, you said at 23, right? Yeah, with 23. I moved 20, with 21. I yeah. played there for for two years in the in the youth team. My yeah. first year, I need to explain that because, yes. because uh, my first year, uh, when I um, I was there for three months in one cup game, uh, I did a big injury. The first big injury in my career is mm. uh, I have a problem in the tendon here. I need a surgery. 
Mm. Yeah, I need to stop for three or four months. But imagine, I don't have there my family, I don't have there only my, my teammates. Uh, it's true, the, the club, um, the people uh, around the, the academy uh, support me a lot. Of, um, I, I, in all, all the moment, I felt the, the support of them. And that was a, a difficult moment because you move, you do, you do, you did a good uh, one movement. You think, oh, this is the movement I can become a, a become a be a professional. Mm. And when you are there for three months, uh, that happened for, for in my in my head. Oh, what are doing here? Yeah, yeah. A lot of doubt and fear yeah. would have yeah. come to you thinking. How am I going to be professional? All this work for nothing. Yeah, and no. My my girlfriend is in my village. What are yeah. doing here? I don't know. I want to. I want to move back. Yeah. It, so at this point, you were with your girlfriend. So she's from the same village. Yes. yes so you were with her from a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. very young age. Uh, she his her house is two hundred meters from my house. Wow. <laughs> the that's over incredible. Over parent house is yeah, yeah. twelve two hundred meters. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's amazing. So it would have been really hard for her to while you were away for so long. Yeah, yeah I I went when well, it's true in, in Seville, uh, she went to study to Seville. Uh, mm. in Seville when in the moment I, I am playing for Real Betty, we are there together. Um, it's true when I moved to Barcelona she continued studying, studying in Seville, and after two or three years, he, he did a master in, in Barcelona, and yes. we started to live together. In that uh, yes, okay. With 23, 24, 25, we, start, we are separated three or four years, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how was that moment when you, so, you, so how, well, first of all, how did you overcome that injury? And then did, did that make you really work, work harder? Did it make you really hungry to try to prove yourself to get to get your your dream to make your dream a reality yeah because in that moment um, it was uh, difficult for me uh, because my fair uh, for long injury or bad injury and um, i went to training i went to do a recovery in the morning and in the afternoon i i only i need to do in the morning with the with the insurance company i need to go there they don't need to do nothing more, but I want to recover as soon as possible. Uh, I I went in the afternoon too. I worked pr practically all the day. Mm -hmm. I working for uh, in three four months. I start to play again, mm -hmm. okay. But it's, I remember like good moments. Mm -hmm. Good moment. It's it's bad, but it's a learning. Yeah. Did it make you? Did it change you in a positive way? Do you feel like it changed something having an injury like that because you hadn't had one before? Yeah, I think I think so. I think so that that helped me for change the mentality, for be more positive. Because you are you are good, you are good, you are good. In some moment, a uh, something out of your of your control. Yes, happen. Oh, when you, what in that moment you when you start to think oh. For what you worry about that or worry about that? No, uh, you only need to be focused on uh, the things you can control. Uh, mm. From that moment, I start to be more positive with the, um, I'm more mature too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I lived that moment with my teammate, but, but alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. And how did that lead into your debut to play uh, for Espanyol? Is in 2019? No, 2019. No, 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 no. 2019 is now. 2009. <laughs> so, 2000, 2009 yeah. in, in La Ceramica is the stadium of Villarreal. Mm. Uh, I remember uh, Mauricio Pochettino is now actually currently a coach for Chelsea. Uh, he told me two weeks before, he told me, hey, probably Javi, you can make your debut this week because I like how you are training. I think you can, uh, you can, uh, I don't know now the subject word, but I can do something for the team. Mm -hmm. uh, he told me more or less that. Um, um, 
the first week I go, my family, all my family move to, to Barcelona for, for try to watch my debut. They don't want to lose that moment. And uh, what happened? I didn't do the debut. Yeah. It's again Jerez. It's nil nil the score. Jerez in that moment is in the is on the bottom of the leader. Yeah. Uh, he didn't do the the debut. Okay. Come on to the next week. The next week, uh, he do, he didn't tell me nothing. But my parent. Okay. He did. He did. He said to you that to we the, the last week probably this week you had your chance. We play again Deportivo La Coruña in Riazor. And my dad, in this moment, my mom and my dad moved to to Riazor for, well, moved to Coruña mm -hmm. uh, for try to watch the game. For not watch the game, for watch my debut. But no, no. Again, no. Again, no. And the next week, we play uh, again Villarreal. Uh, I think uh, it's first Coruña coming, my parents, uh, Jerez coming, all my family. Um, after is Villarreal, but the third week they cannot move around the <laughs> around the country. For it was the debut of, a, of a his <laughs> son or his brother, or yeah. uh, what happened? No one coming, no one coming. I go there. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I can make my debut that de that day because we have one player. The referee sent off in the. 15 minutes. 15. 15. We are yeah. playing all the game with one player less. I am in the second half. I went to warm up. Uh, when it's 10 minutes for for the for the end of the game, Mauricio Pochettino told me. I called me. Uh, Javi, come on. Uh, do the the stuff you know. I am so happy with you. With we believe in yourself and with confidence. Come on, you you have your chance. Yeah, I enter in the pitch. I don't think so. I touch the ball one time or two times, <laughs> but it's true. I am so excited <laughs> in that in that moment. Um, that's all. The 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 result is nil nil. Um, you know, when I finish the game, I was my phone. That is unbelievable. <laughs> that I never in my life. Great one it. touch, <laughs> beautiful one touch. <laughs> Uh, more or less, <laughs> no, but a lot of beautiful, beautiful matches yeah. from Juanito, from Juan, uh, Jose Mari Pinto is one friend I play in my childhood is, is with him playing soccer all the time in the facility of the of our village. Um, he, I remember his, his message too. He told me, I can't death in calm now. He said, he, 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 said, he told me, I can death diet. I can, yeah, yeah. I can diet now. I can die I, happy. I can, I can die. I can die in, in peace. Yeah, in peace. peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can die in peace. Yeah, I yeah. remember the, the message he, he sent me to uh, my family, my brother, sister, my girlfriend in that moment, mm -hmm. all of all the message. They are so proud of me. Good friends. I remember that, but it's true. I, that is in October. 4th of October is the debut. He, that year, that season, I don't, I don't play more with the team. <laughs> with the, uh, I need to go back to the choose team. I cannot play more. I didn't play more that that mm. year, that season. And then it started from next year onwards. It started to come a little bit more. Yeah, but I didn't. I in that moment, I I didn't know what uh, will happen in the future. Sure. But that season, I struggled with myself because I did my debut the fourth of October. Is eight months more until the end of the season. He, no one told me nothing. Mm. No one. I sometimes I go to training with the first team, but I moved to back to training with the academy. Uh, at the end of the season, uh, the director of academy called me. No, the Mauricio, Mauricio, the coach of the first team. He want to just start to training with them in precision. He want to see you. Uh, we, we, we'll see what happens. What yeah, happen, what come happen? pre season and show us what you have, and mm -hmm. let's see what happens. Yeah, I arrive after the season. Mm. After in pre season, I start the pre season. I have a little injury in the so, in the quad. Yes, the for the tendon for that tendon. I did the surgery three years before. I have a little problem there, uh, but. After I start to train, I start to train, I start to training. 
I think it's 10 days before or 10 or 15 days before close the window for the transfers window. Mm. Uh, I received one one call from my agent and he told me, hey, probably we need to move. Uh, we are trying to find a club in second division. Uh, the the Spaniel won one one all one loan for you, for you improve, for you grow up. But in that moment, uh, in that days, we are talking with another club, uh, one right back of my team. Uh, he have a big injury in the knee for one year. Uh, um, they give me the the opportunity. All change. I don't go. I didn't go. I didn't go in in on loan. And I need to stay there. They do. They did a contract. A professional contract. I remember. I remember the call to my pa- dad and my mom. They. I call to my dad. They put the the boys in the phone. I start to say, yeah, I probably no, probably no. I 100%. I I'll sign a contract, a professional contract with with Espanol for three years. I explain all about the contract, and they start together. They start together in a. They are in the car in that moment, but they stop. And they start to cry, bro. Mm. Oh, imagine you. No, it's only the dream of your son, or your your son get his his dream. It's a it's their dreams too. Their yeah. Dream. When you when you follow your children, whatever play or you do whatever for him for him or for her, uh, it's your dream too. Mm. They they get the dream too. That's amazing. What a moment that would have been. Yeah. Very very special. Very special. Very special. Yeah, it's very interesting in football where you get the opportunities where someone can have like a big injury like that and you get the chance to kind of slot in because you're relying on people in a certain position. So if you're a central midfielder, you're playing for that spot against some other person or maybe one other, maybe three people fighting for that spot and there's only limited opportunities um, and if you, cause you could, it's not like you can play all different positions. It's very rare for someone to play multiple positions. So for, the, for them to be able to fight for the spot and wait for these opportunities, it can be a long time waiting and you might be a great person for that, but the opportunity may never come. Yeah. The most important, you need to be ready. You need to be ready. You need to be ready because if that happened, you are not ready another another player coming you don't have your option uh, it's true in that moment mm, no it's lucky for me because i don't i don't i don't like no or in that moment i didn't like one one player have a big injury or important injury uh, that is no the the perfect way but it's true for that moment uh, for that that uh, I have, I am, re- I was ready in that moment. I have my chance. Yeah, after I, I take, a, I take advantage of my, of my yes, opportunity. Of course, you know uh, that is the the most important because some pro- some problem we always, uh, oh excuse 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 oh no that oh the another one no but you would you was ready the most important do you was do you was ready yeah. If you are, if you don't worry, ready, is the moment right? What mm-hmm. happened? Who is the fall? Is your fall or her fall or his fall? Mm. It's really, yeah, it's really important what you're saying. When the moment comes, have to be ready. Yeah. You've been working all your life for that moment and you were ready and you took the opportunity. Yeah. How was your first season? My first season, I, I remember, I, I, it's true, eh? I recognize I am very emotional guy. I am very, very emotional. I remember uh, how I cried the last game of the season against Seville. Uh, we have for a ride to the over chain room or for leave over chain room in, in Cornelia Stadium. Uh, well, now it's RCDE Stadium. Mm. Uh, we have a corridor with all the jerseys uh, in each side of the wall. Uh, with with photos of the all that player play with that jerseys, uh, yeah, I remember l- living the that season. It's is so late after the game. I was in the change room. I don't want that season finish. I didn't I didn't want that, that season finish because it was uh, 
I I felt that that season like a hero, like, like a, a hero, like a hero. Yeah, because uh, the coach told me, "Hey, you need to mark in the corner." Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos is one of the best header in set piece attacking set piece in the world, probably. Yeah, I don't have any fear. I felt uh, comfortable with confidence for stopping whatever player. Uh, again, Cristiano. Mm. Uh, I don't have any problem with anyone. I I felt I can play that season. I play it right winger, left winger, right back, left back, uh, midfielder. In whatever position is the coach told me that season. I play a striker. I can play a striker because it's one connection, one feeling. I didn't feel more in. I didn't feel more in my career. Like, so in that first season, you've never felt like no, that again. No, you that know. motivation, that 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 kind of of focus mm. in the game, in the training, mm. is like a. I I felt like a, I I am one with the ball and with the pitch uh, with the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, is for the whole season. For the whole season. Wow, that's a long time. You're in zone, in the zone, and focus for. Yeah, it's, it's true. But, I didn't play 38 game that yes. season. Uh, I probably I play 25 games, yeah. but all the games I played, I felt that 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 feeling. I cannot I cannot try it's the a, correct word in Spanish for, is, for it, explain. But it's like a, we, I I am one with the situation with yes, all yes, the environment yes, yes. around me. I went, I was I felt one. I am one with them all together. Mm. Is there? I know it's hard to explain in words, especially in your second language. But is there a is there something you can explain as to what helped you or how you felt in this for so long? What helps you to be like this? Because it's a lot of people try or try to feel like they can or work towards being here, but it's it's very difficult to be in this space. I I I was living my dream that moment. That is the that is the I can explain with that. I was living my dream, the dream I I for I sacrificed all part of my childhood mm -hmm. because that is true. The I hundred hundred uh, percent some some of my friend or some people with my age they live it. Uh, something I can I I could live. 100% because I am so I am focused in football. I am mm -hmm. focused in football. Yeah, but it's my my decision, my elec election is my election. Mm -hmm. I decide that way I choose I sacrifice no sacrifice because it's my decision. Mm -hmm. I I I did it everything because I thought that is the way for become a, a pro. Mm -hmm. uh, I am living my dream in that moment. I I am in. I was in the TV loud. Mm -hmm. Like I dream when I was young, when I was the game with my family in my house. Or I hopefully in the future I can. I want to stay there. Yeah. I want to stay there. I want to stay there. I want to stay there. When you talk to it with with yourself, I want to stay there. I want to get that. I want to get that. I yeah. want to get that. That is your first thinking when you wake up and the last thinking when you go to the bed. Mm. Can happen. Yeah. I, I told you I can happen. Yeah, I can say to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. Happen. It's incredible. Um, so you had that for the full season, but what took you out of that as you played more in your career? Did you get out of that a bit more? Did it become more of a job or did it change as you went on in any way or not? Uh, not like that. Not like that okay. season. Not like that season. Be, be, you but know what happened when you start to know how work yes. the professional the professional sport. Not everything is new, whereas in the first season everything yeah, was everything new and exciting. New. Yeah, everything is new. Yeah, I don't care about the the social media. I don't mm. care about the critics. I don't. I don't. I don't care. No, no. Well, I didn't care nothing in mm. that moment. But after, uh, when you have bad moment because it's a career, you have good moment, bad moment. I start to have uh, do about me, about mm. myself. Yes. Uh, 
And we talked before a little about that, but in 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 16 or 17, no one talked about the mental health. Yeah. It's true in some moment of my career, I struggling with my mental health. I need, I need help from, uh, from different people to, to help me for try to get out of that moment. Mm. Um, but that is the, the part we are talking now. I like it that people talking more or open, yes. open in that, in that way. Yes. But it's true in that moment when if you say, oh, I have problem of mental health. Oh. He cannot control the pressure. He cannot control yeah. nothing. He can uh, no, no, get out. Yeah, I need to control with myself, with me, and with the with the person I work in that moment. Mm. Yeah, it's true. It's changed a lot. Yeah, it's changed a lot in the last fifteen years, especially. Mm. Uh, you talked about playing with uh, Cristiano <laughs> and uh, Lionel Messi. So. What do you remember about playing with some of the greatest? Even there's so many other amazing players that are world class, some of the best that have ever played uh, that you you played against in the La Liga. Um, what do you remember from playing against these players? Players at this level, what does it really teach you? Uh, what did you kind of see in them that makes them just the best that we've ever seen? Uh, like Materazzi say, I think it's Materazzi, no? Like, like Materazzi say, I, I start to believe more in God because I need to, to pray for, try to stop that pleasure. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, I think it, I, I think it's Materazzi say that, something like that. Uh, but no, it's, well, you need to be, you need help. You need help for stop that pleasure, for stop that, that pleasure because that, that gains, uh, wow, you are, you know, all around you, around the week. Normally, the week in Espanol is a normal week, always the same journalist there uh, for talking with you. But that week, when you play against Real Madrid, against Barcelona, that week is crazy. Everyone in a national, in, uh, all the journalists from national mm. uh, Spain, uh, all the people won't interview with you. All the people won't talk about the the how is your week. Is you you start to feel oh yeah we are playing again this week we are playing with uh, again Barcelona Real Madrid mm -hmm. and even when we play it again Barcelona even more because it's the rival it's our rival mm. um, that week that weeks. Uh, was amazing. Uh, you in that moment, you you think you are. Oh, I am a. You feel you fell in all the moment. You are a professional player, but that weeks uh, you another feel, level. Another like, level. I'm a really professional yeah. player. Yeah. Really like. Uh, oh, I uh, I think all the around all the world is looking me or mm. watching me. It, that is the truth because mm. the the game of Barcelona or Real Madrid around the world. I don't know how many how many people can watch one game or Real Madrid mm. or Barcelona. A million, mm. million yeah. of people. Did you form any relationships or f close friendships with any of these sort of players, or what, did you speak to them? Yes, at, I, at all. Like, what? How were they as as people outside of? Um, I have, I have always good relation with Sergio Ramos because yeah. we play it together in the. Um, no, it's a national team because no, it's uh, from Spain, but in the south, uh, it's over in the south, Andalusia. Mm. Uh, we have an, uh, uh, one selection, uh, one nas uh, no, it's national, it's a selection of players. I played with, with, with him there. We, we, we were roommates and always I have a I have good relation with him. Mm. Um, always when we play against Real Madrid or where always I swap the jersey with him. Probably I give a couple of friends jersey of Sergio Ramos, but probably I can have five jerseys for Sergio Ramos, six. Mm. Um, with him is with with Jordi Alba. Now he's in Miami playing with with Messi. The another day I sent one Messi to him. I one message message to him because he did one assist to to Messi. Mm. The same assist. I probably he did that assist. Uh, Messi did that goal one hundred times. Yeah, I, t I start to talking with him about that. Eh? Probably we try to stop that action. We know you, you, you will do that action with Messi. 
but we cannot stop. How is possible you continue doing? <laughs> but they continue doing because they are the the best player. You know, yeah. the best player. But it's crazy. Um, the the when Lucas Vasquez playing for Real Madrid, I play with him in in Espanol. He's a good good guy and profession un professional player. It's very very professional. Is mm. I have good relation. I went to to his to his wedding too. We have we have a fun that day. <laughs> <laughs> very fun. <laughs> Who who's the goat? The the goat. The goat. Oh, good question, eh? Good <laughs> question, eh? <laughs> I always you know that probably that is the question more more people uh, did it uh, did to me. The who is the goat? Who is the goat? He always I say ah, the people. Hey, who is the goat? But they you did correct because who is the goat? But the people who is the goat? Messi or Cristiano? And when they uh, uh, they answer uh, they asking to me that I say Cunawero. No, no, but because they want to know. Hey, I I am Cristiano. I want to know if you are with me, Cristiano or Messi. I always answer. Sorry, the, for me the best is Cunawero. But no, but who is better? Cristiano, not Cunawero. But no, it's true. Uh, we are talking about the probably the best player in the in the history together Maradona, for me. Um, different players, different players. Cristiano Ronaldo is unbelievable top the scorer. But if we talk about everything in football, about talent, about football, probably it's, it's Messi. Probably mm. Messi because you can see him. You can see him. He is like he's one with the ball. Yeah. Like for me, is a, Marad a Maradona clone. Uh, but what happened? Maradona played for less time that level, and Messi is for twenty years is playing that level. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing with Federer. And um, yeah, Federer, uh, Nadal, and Djokovic. Yeah, just uh, based on stats, like Djokovic is is the goat. But if you look at someone and as the essence of tennis and the the pure ball striking, the pure ability, you, you look at Federer and go, "Wow, that's something very different it's to like, to the other the other two. It's like natural, no? It's like yeah. a, oh, he did it. It's like a, wow, you are looking something is. Beautiful with, art. Yeah, it's art. It's art. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I think with Messi happened the same. It's yeah, art. it seems like a similar comparison yeah. in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's perfect, mm. perfect, perfect comparison. What um, how would you say the style of football was in Spain? Like, was there differences in style in Spain, or was it all pretty similar in in the way that you guys were playing? Like, how were you taught to play? How were you um? How did the coaches really want you to play? Now it's, it's changing because from Guardiola start with Barcelona, mm. with the famous uh, Tiki Taka, yeah. uh, a lot of a uh, new coach uh, with the start now, uh, they want to to play in the same way, but it's different because no one have Messi. Um, uh, it's different, but before than Guardiola, I think normally all the all the teams play not si no the same, but similar. Yeah. Uh, good tactical, good positioning, uh, very, very tactical. The games there before is very, very tactical. Uh, it's like a game of chess. Uh, if I move here, if we move here, uh, or the, if they move to here, we need to move forward on the side. More tactical, I thought. It's more tactical, very, very defensive before, but now is they are is more modern football, more uh, uh, strong football player, physical player, more go and back, go and back, box to box, um, for everyone. Before the right back or left back, they need to stay in good position, try to defend, try to don't receive too many goals mm. or too many don't happen too many things for your for your line or for your plays. Uh, no, no. Now the right back need to arrive, need to mm. do a good cross, need to dribble in the player, need mm. to score goal, uh, need to back, need to play inside. Uh, now is the football is uh, is changing, is changing. The, now uh, I am uh, watching a lot of the game. And now it's more than before. It's 
continue doing tactical, but now more is about the space. You need to think more. Before you with the team four four two, okay, we with that formation, we can do we can stay close, and when we have ball, we can do we can put the ball there, we can go there. Uh, but now it's about the space. How is the another movement? Uh, how is the movement of the opponent? But you need to move the opposite way or try to stay for attraction that player. I think the the modern football is more than more uh, to that way. Uh, you need to think a lot on more now. Mm, that's really interesting because uh, it's almost like the right back and the left back are doing almost the most running on the whole pitch now like if they're, they're covering the most kilometers per game with the amount of overlapping and crossing and then cutting in then playing defensive and then continually going up and back it's a lot of work is the is the player uh, run more in higher intensity but the player run more normally is the midfielder yes the central mid midfielder the central midfielder yeah. the one midfielder number six or number mm. eight uh, depend on your formation, but they, they are the player run more. But it's true the full backs, the right back, left back, they run more in high intensity. Mm. High intensity is more than I think here is more than twenty one k's for hour. When you run more that distance, more 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 speed than that, you are running a high intensity. I see. Yes. And what position have you played most of your career in? Is it been a bit more defensive or a little bit more central midfielder? More defensive, more right so, back. Okay, right back. Right back. Yeah. Yeah. It, but when I was uh, when I was young, I, yeah, I am young. Eh? I feel young. Eh? Continue with thirty years. I feel young now. You eh? feel but, young. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, when I was young, I play a striker. Yes. I okay. play a striker. But I start to move to the wing, left winger. After left winger, right winger. And after we with Pochettino, we did the movement to right back. He helped me a lot too. In my, I we, I told about the the people uh, Juanito, my parent, my wife start to help me in my first moment. But it's true with Pochettino, uh, he helped me a lot. Of. He, you know, is you are who a, is who is Pochettino? Sorry, the 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 oh Mauricio Pochettino is the training the tra the coach of Chelsea now. Oh, uh, so, I yes. did my debut with him in Espanol. Yes, and he helped me. He. I have a lot of meeting with him, mm. only with him in his room and watching videos about right backs. Hey, look at that right back. What me, look he did it. That is good. You need to do that. Or reviews my game, my own games with him, mm. reviewed with himself, with him and me only in the room. Um you, when you are a fair coach of the one thing, sometimes you don't need you don't have time for for spend your time with one young player for teach him. You need to control 26 players or 25 players, the, the staff, the journalists. You need to control a lot of things. You need to think in the next game. Uh, what is your formation? How you need to how you do you need this week in training? And he spent a lot of time with me. Mm. And so grateful to, to him too. Mm. That's amazing. That would have been really helpful. Yeah. And also for you to understand the role of a right back so quickly yeah. when you haven't played in that position. Uh, growing up as a boy yeah, my, might have been a big change yeah my first game bueno my second game right back uh, was uh, in first division in first, I, I only played one fair, one game right back before than my debut in mm -hmm. in first division like right back mm -hmm. and what would you say you how would you describe yourself as a player kind of your your mentality your personality uh, what do you do well um, what sort of things do you find challenging? I, I, I think I give all myself uh, in the pitch. Mm. I give. It's I need to open my head like here for yes. one for win one ball. Mm -hmm. I do it. I do it. I do it for my team. For my the it's my. It's my profession, my joy, my passion. If I need to do or something happen to me because I go to the to the limit always. I am uh, uh, very aggressive. I try to always try to stay close uh, to the opponent and try to anticipate to him. And I'm going to the limit. I am not a, 
a star. I know that I am not a star, but I am so proud of my career. I am proud of all I did it, all I am doing here in Adelaide. Mm. Um, is I want is you and me all. What do you want the people remember to you like player? Mm. The people I am so proud. The people say he he give he gave everything in the pitch. That because I am I am that guy. I recognize that guy. Mm. The people told me he gave everything in the pitch. I am that. We love that guy. <laughs> I love coaching a player <laughs> or seeing a player in any sport that gives everything to yeah. to it. Like give all their heart and soul and yeah. everything to to for the team or for the win. It's uh yeah. What I notice is that I'm noticing a lot less kids growing up with that sort of mentality and i was talking to a few people and i was thinking like that's something you can't really teach people you either have that or you don't you can maybe teach some ideas around how to create that but it's something that needs to come from inside of you and that's just something that i'm guessing you've had your whole life right yeah 100 yeah. mm. percent. hopefully my my daughter have that in the in the future or now straight now yeah. because is they ha they have uh, that i recognize i recognize in me too yeah yeah was well, one thing that i noticed because um we got connected through you bringing your daughter out to our training uh and young julieta i can see she has <laughs> she has the fire she has the fire in her eyes like her eyes go wide and she's just like ready for the ball she's moving she just looks so intense and wanting to chase and fight and compete and it's um it's exciting to see that when i see some someone has that it's very exciting for me because it's like wow like they want to give everything to this they're pushing so hard they want to do really well and they want to compete and give everything and that's obviously for me too. come coming from you for me uh, imagine when i arrived to my house i was here with the window with the racket with the ball bang, yeah. bang. But the repetition, I say to her, hey, repetition is learning. Repetition, repetition, more repetition, better you do, better you do. And she starts today or she or went or not only that because she's doing gymnastic too. Mm. Um, she arrived, she arrived to my house, he put in practice all the skills he learned in the in gymnastic. With everything she did, she's so competitive, mm. even in soccer. When, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the soccer is football. <laughs> Uh, even in football, when when she plays, she want to learn. Or when I was her watching in YouTube uh, different videos about uh, how learn new skill about tennis, about football, about gymnastic. I love, I love that. I love the sport. I mm. want my my daughter grow up in one environment around the sport because mm. I think the the values give the sport don't give another thing in the life. I think the, what do you mean sorry the values of the, the values of, from the sport from the sport like you can, cannot, can help you in life is that what yeah, you're saying yeah you can you cannot find that values in another part yeah you can find that values in a sport only in a sport mm, that's the beautiful thing about sport it helps yeah. so much to learn important life lessons in that if, way before that i for me so important my, my daughter practice some sport mm. after if they like if they want to continue when they they can take the decision okay but now i think they are enjoying because the little one is in one club in gymnastic mm. and juliera is enrolling in, in gymnastics and now in in, in the academy mm. in tennis he, i think they are they are learning they are having fun um they want improve yeah. Because they ask me uh, always the man of me eh, that I won't improve in that. I won't improve in that. Yeah, I am here for help and all I can. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah, you'd be a great dad. I can imagine. <laughs> hopefully, <Yeah>. hopefully. <laughs> um, obviously, you're playing for LA United in the A League. Um, how would you compare, or not even compare, but explain the differences between uh, Australian football and Spanish? Obviously. Uh, f football's not something that we've had a lot of experience playing like yes it's been around for a while but it hasn't been something that's been very popular and it's still developing and it's um nowhere near the level compared to playing in spain for example but how would you compare 
what it was like coming from Espanol to then playing at Adelaide United, the differences between the the standard, the quality, how you were playing the style versus how you're playing in, in Adelaide and Australian, Australian football? It, it's true you cannot compare because it's different football. It's true uh, in Spain, the the budget for football for La Liga probably is two, three billion. Mm. Uh, when you can have or you can spend more money, what is the meaning of that? You you can have better facilities, you can have better players. Um, for that, you cannot compare the, the football. It's totally different football. But if you talk about the style in Spain, when I played there, because it's, true, it's now five season ago, when I played there, it's more tactical. And when I arrived here to, uh, to, to Adelaide, I moved to Australian football. Uh, here is more, uh, I don't play never in, I didn't play never in Premier League, but I was a lot of game in Premier League. Here is more like the, the football is the style is more than Premier League. Style. More like Premier League. More Premier League, yeah. more the go and back, attack, yeah. uh, attacking, defender, uh, defending is all the time a lot of intensity mm. in Spain. Sometimes the, I have the data, the stats of, mm. the, of my game when I play in, in, in Espanol. And sometimes there I run less than here because that, that, that is, that the meaning of that, I, when I, you read the, the data, you say, oh, you don't need to run too much there. There probably you need to think more, mm. you need to wait your moment. Uh, it's more tactical and yeah. here is more bam, bam, come on come on come on let's go yeah. let's go go and back go and back go yeah. and back and that is one of the the biggest difference but uh one handicap is hard to me here i explained to you before we start is we are playing here in summer that is a big big handicap you can know sometimes you watch the game for the TV of oh, the it's a slow, no? The ball look like a, the game is a slow game, uh, but it's for that. Sometimes you cannot with that weather, you cannot breathe. It's, uh, we play three weeks ago. We play we play in Sydney. It's the eighty three percent of humidity. You cannot breathe. You run to time. You cannot breathe. <gasps> Uh, you, oh, what's happening here? What's happening here? Uh, that's a big handicap. Yeah. Because in Spain, you play in winter, autumn, spring, but don't play. Probably in August, start the season, uh, the f- first week of September, that you play probably three weeks in summer there. But here you are playing the three months of summer, and um, before summer is hot. After summer, now it's hot. We we finished the summer the last week, and this week is 36, 36 degrees, thirty seven. And that is a big handicap. You need to be fit here for for try to play here. If you are not fit, you cannot play in the Australian football. One hundred percent. Yeah, brutal connection condition. Sorry to play. Yeah. Like very yeah. hard conditions. You talked a little bit about. Um, in Spain, it being more tactical and having to think more. Do you think that the players uh, in Australia lack that tactical awareness or the ability to really think a little bit more outside the box um, when playing the game because they're not maybe exposed to that way of thinking or style growing up here? Uh, can you repeat? Please. Yeah, so do you think in Australia with the players that you expl- you're playing uh, with, uh, okay. in Adelaide United yeah. or in different teams that you okay. play against. Okay. Do you think that they lack the ability, so they don't have the ability to think more tactical and that stops them from maybe developing more with their football? I, I think uh, when we was 10, 11 years uh, in Spain, the coach is talking to you about tacticals. But probably now they are start to do it now because the is a the, the world of the football or not only football all the world is globalized now, and um, we can find model training in whatever place now in one click. Mm. Uh, but here is it's growing up, it's growing up, it's growing up. But it's true, 
Uh, if you start to now, uh, you compare now the player with 13 year or 14 or 15 or even professional with the player from, I don't talk about Spain because no, probably, oh, Spain, Spain, no, mm. about in Europe, it's mm. one of the, the best football in Europe or in, even Brazil. Uh, it's different, it's different. Probably there we are working more in, in tactical, we, we work more tactical, more, more professional from young uh, than here. Yeah. And here you start to do a professional training like professional, probably when you arrive to the, the second team, but now no, now I know here in Adelaide, they are creating, you know, they have from the last turn of the last season, they have a higher performance program. Mm. Uh, I am doing co I am doing coaching there oh, like cool. one, one day a, a week. I'm trying to 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 learn and help the the boys. Um, How old are these boys in, uh, in this under, program? Under bueno, it's under thirteen, under twelve, under eleven. It's three 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 program. And after the girls, uh, I am doing with boys, and the girls is under thirteen and under twelve. I think I am not sure mm. because I am not in in that program i am with i am with the boys but it's under under 13 under 12 and 11 and mm. doing one day a, a week um they are working two days a week with them but i can only do one day and i know now uh, they are trying to do more that more that the europe uh, training uh, more focus in that yeah. but all have a process you don't have the the government or you don't have the the people support to you it's more difficult you start to grow up or you can compete, uh, com be competitive again in that team. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true in uh, the, the last World Cup of Australia was incredible. Yeah, it's just going to take a long time to build here. Like it's, there's a lot of work to do. It's, it's very, we don't, haven't had that level of uh, coaching or that style growing up at a very young age and it's yeah it's just going to take take some time but it seems like they're wanting to change and wanting to improve but they are in the way even they have uh one of the best the best coach now in the premier league is from australia he yeah. plays doing the, the tottenham, he, and tottenham Poster, and Poster yeah. yeah he's one of the best coach and he's he was the here for a long time he 100 percent he teach a lot of people in his in his career here and that people now uh, need to to teach another people yes. if from there is how you can grow up because it's difficult because all the in all uh, all the country happen the same it's so difficult you bring one one coach from overseas and you give all the power and you believe in him oh no that is so difficult mm. because all the country have his he their ego you know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so so difficult you do that but uh, sometimes you don't need to go overseas for find one one people come in this case uh, one coach for teach you about football because mm. you can have here unbelievable coach too yeah sure do you find it hard to be playing in Australia compared to how you were playing in Spain and the style and the sort of players that you were playing with. Do you find yeah? Do you find it difficult to kind of play here and play no. a different style? No. Why is the that? Tr the truth is no. The truth is no because when I arrive here in one moment, I come here after a bad moment in Espanol. Mm. My last year is I take the ten year there in first division was incredible the best moment of my life of my life sorry um the last the last year was so difficult with relegation to second division was incredible i uh, i was three months in my in my town with 34 years in COVID time the 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 market doesn't move to too much i didn't found team i don't want to play i want to move overseas because was in that moment I struggling a lot of with myself, with my mind. Uh, I cannot, I, I was not be, I was, I wasn't happy. Mm. I wasn't happy there. Uh, in that moment, appear Adelaide uh, for Isaiah, Juan de Abrugite. I found the auction, they come to here. 
Uh, when I arrive here, I come without any fear, only for enjoy. I can I can here. I, I sign contract for seven months. Is um, I come with my family. Okay, come on there. Try to back to be happy <laughs> and go for enjoy. Go for enjoy, relax, uh, enjoy the football, enjoy the lifestyle. All the people talking told us about uh, the lifestyle in Australia, unbelievable. We we can we can say now it's it's, it's okay that it's, 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 it's true it's true. Uh, hey, when I arrive here, I come for play football. When in in the same way I play when I was young. Mm. If for that is no doesn't was or is no doing difficult for me playing this football yeah. was it a really hard move for your family to to make a massive because it's a big change it's a big change but when i remember now uh, uh, the first moment the the most difficult was uh, stay 15 days in one hotel closer without with windows closed we cannot open the door more than two seconds for pick up our food and and uh, drop off the box the the back the bus the back bus, yes yes back um that that was really hard in that moment but i am so proud of my family i'm so proud of my family because my my daughters and uh, my wife they are teaching to me you you don't have to you don't need to have fear for nothing you can move to one country um they are they are very good very happy yeah, yeah. Uh, they want my big one uh julieta she say i am australian i am australian i say no you're not australian but uh, she felt she's australian she feels she's australian yeah yeah it's crazy but no yeah at, at the start it was a hard movement but after no after i think it's a big big experience a life experience for us mm. i think never we never forget what we are living here a hundred percent in, in 50 years I is I am here or in 40 I, I need to be sure it probably <laughs> in 40 yeah or hopefully hopefully, 30, 30. Maybe, hopefully 50 <laughs> hopefully hopefully a hundred percent is I remember this moment I remember like no it's the, probably the best moment of my life too uh, together uh, my moment is in español mm. because the experience we are living here not only in football uh, with the lifestyle the experience the the new learning we are we are having yes uh, is, is doing incredible yeah what do you really love about australia the lifestyle is is crazy uh, in what way like what do you mean by that the lifestyle is I I feel so re I feel so relaxed. The the security I feel so relaxed. I can go. Uh, I have from my house. I have fifteen minutes to the CBD. Fifteen minutes to the headlay. Mm -hmm. uh, I can enjoy. I I like the the go to the branch. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is like. Everything. It's Everything's everything. so easy. It's so safe. Yeah. You can do all these things. That, that is compared to compared to where you were living in Spain. It's just very busy. Yeah. Hard to get everywhere. Traffic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's another another culture. It's another culture. Mm. It's it's true. I miss a lot of the food in the food from Spain. That is yeah. the true. That is the the most I miss together my family and friends. Uh, but. We are so happy here. I, that you say is the is so, so easy. The life here, mm. the security. We are safe. We mm. feel safe in all the moment. We don't have no problem with no one. Yeah. <sighs> Especially in Adelaide, like it's so nice to raise a family here. It's one of the best places in Australia, I think, to have and raise a family because it's it's big enough. It's not too big, but there's still so much safety. It's very easy to get around. Yeah. It's very easy to drive here. No. And it's, it's a great place to actually have a family. Yeah, we, we, all we want to do, we, ha we can do it here. Mm. We, we can, the children, oh, I want to go to the dance. Okay, we found 
unbelievable academy for dance or we want to do tennis we found unbelievable <laughs> academy of tennis <laughs> uh, or whatever we want to do it uh, or a restaurant different kind of food uh, the life here for us is, is, is uh, we are living <laughs> we are living a like a dream it's amazing too. Because they are growing growing up in good environment with good people, good good friends, good families, with in the school, the the community in the school. We are so happy too with the the school we we choose for them. Beautiful yeah, man, is that yeah. is that? That's Hopefully amazing. we can get the the visa for continue here. Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> We'd love to have someone like you in Australia and Adelaide. What values do you want to bring to your to your children? What do you really want to teach them or hope that, that they have or carry in their life? Respect. 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 Yeah, respect. Without respect, we cannot go to any any place. Respect. Um, overcome. Overcome. Like uh, overcome hard and challenging things. Overcome. Yeah. Yes. You overcome because the life is. Um, it's a roller coaster. Yes. It's a roller coaster. You need to know when you are right here because in your life you are here 100% because everyone happened for bad moments. Mm -hmm. You need to work on that moments. That that kind of value, two of them, I, probably in, Sp in, Sp in Spanish I can say more, <laughs> but yes. in English uh, that too is, is so important for me. Yeah. Respect and overcome. Is that really part of the Spanish culture? Like a couple of those things. Just uh, is that? Do you feel like that's part of what a lot of Spanish people really believe? Just about respect and really having the ability to overcome challenge and hard times. I think more overcome, more overcome uh, is one of the values because we have the where best ambassador in the in Spain is Rafa Nadal. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, this I, is why I was thinking this. Yeah, because he uh, talks about it a lot. I think he's uh, the best example about the overcome the situation, mm. and overcome and work. And it's true. He's a good example to uh, about respect. Mm. Uh, that that kind of value is the. Hopefully, my daughter can have that values in the in the yeah. future. Even uh, ho hopefully more, but that too is so important. I, Mm. it's yeah it's so interesting listening to you because it just reminds me of listening to Rafael Nadal because <laughs> when I listen to his press conferences just the way you speak sounds similar to him and just like your expressions and for me for me that is one is <laughs> Rafael Nadal is one of my idols <laughs> it's a idol of, of all of the Spaniards yeah all of the Spaniards it's a big big example yeah 100% he's an incredible man yeah. um, and if yeah, kids are listening to him and uh, embodying or bringing the values that he has, then they're, they're going to become, yeah, great people. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much. I've absolutely loved this conversation. Very grateful and loved hearing about your story, your passion, your energy. Um, some of the life lessons that you've learned, I can, I can feel how they have changed you and your explanations of them, even though it's in your second language, were amazing to listen to. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely loved the conversation today. I've really loved hearing all the story and just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to yeah, have the chat today. No, thank you to you for, I say uh, at the start, thank you to you for thinning me, thin in me. Yeah. Hopefully you, you enjoy and the, the people here us enjoy about my, my journey. Uh, I am so grateful you grateful so you think in, in me uh, it's a pleasure totally yeah. pleasure uh, it's true when I start the, the podcast or when I start the conversation I'm sweating but I am relaxing now <laughs> <laughs> yeah relax in the Australian <laughs> lifestyle <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is true <laughs> Avi thank you so much man it's a pleasure cheers <laughs> oh that was amazing oh, oh wow yeah, different, different now different <laughs>